want to say good morning to all of our members of the Swole Parkway Church of Christ, friends, family, visitors, and all those who are watching. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here on the Lord's Day Sunday. We hope that this morning you will be encouraged. We also are praying that your week has been blessed regardless of the circumstances. This morning we will rejuvenate your spirit through worship in spirit and in truth. Is that all right? Amen. 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 I am here this morning, Brother Fisher Jr. Uh, the minister is here, of course. Brother Laron Evans is the evangelist here at the Swole Parkway Church of Christ. Deacon Bennigan is here. Uh, Deacon Brown is here. Uh, Brother Wendell Moss is with us this morning to help lift us up in praise. And Brother Brian Smith is also here this morning ready to lift us up in praise. And I know you all are ready to jump and praise and shout hallelujah, but, and we are going to be doing that this morning, but as for right now, let us worship. Let us worship and surrender ourselves in mind, body, and soul unto God this morning. Uh, let us sing number 190. Number 190. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Let us sing, brothers. What a fellowship. And 
Each day I'll do a golden deed. Will I help him go? There will be 
for help someone in time of need and journey on your rapid speed. I'll help the sheep and poor and weak and words of kindness to them I speak. By Stephen and Son is sinking low. A few more days that I must go to meet the deed that I have done. Well, there will be no shedding suns till our going down. My spirit road. I'll try to live some travelers low. I'll try to turn the night to day. May flowers bloom along the way. Sing my sleeping sun. It's sinking low. A few more days. Savior, I adore, live with me, stay. 
singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. It tells us that on the first day of the week, we ought to come together to break bread. In Matthew chapter 26, we find our instructions on how we are to partake in the Lord's Supper. Starting at verse 26, it reads, While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together this morning that we may be able to partake in this bread and a cup in a manner that is pleasing in your sight. May we do so. In the Son's name we pray. Amen. 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 If you have your bread in your cup, you may now open and partake of the bread first, followed by the blood. Giving is also a part of our worship. And as we have been blessed, especially blessed during the times we're in now, the Lord asks that we give back so that we can edify his kingdom. And in Mark 12, a widow gave all that she had. And there's no better example of giving knowing that the Lord will take care of you this one. And the Lord said, calling his disciples to him, he said to them, truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributions to the treasurer. For they all put in all of their surplus, but she out of her poverty put in all she owned and all she had to live on. Trust in the Lord is key. Amen. He will take care of you. Let us pray. Father, again, we say thank you for all that you've done for us. Yes. Father, be with us and keep us that we give so that it may edify you and only you. Amen. And that we remember that depending on you will lead to what we need in life. Amen. Father, allow us to give and bless those who are in need, those who may not be as fortunate as others. But just allow us to always keep you first know that giving is one that we should do. It's these blessings we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. You can give via the Give by app or you can mail your contribution to the church. Amen. 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 Let us sing number 358. 358, when the saved get to heaven. That's an all-time break. It's a fun song. I love the words of that song. When the saved get to heaven. Heaven is the ultimate goal, isn't it? Amen, Amen brothers. Amen. Heaven is where we 
all want to be. And uh, heaven is a place and we can be excited and some hope to, to look forward to that place. Is that all right? Heaven, when the saved get to heaven, let us sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. And in the mansions bright and blessed, he prepared for us a place. Yeah, and when the saved, the saved get to heaven. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. You know, and there to sing 
Amen. Amen. God is a great God. And if we are children of God, we should all have that desire to want to see his face. Amen. One of these days, though, based on the promises of God, based on what he has accomplished through his son, Jesus Christ, he has blessed us with that privilege and promise of one day seeing him face to face in the heavenly realm, where we cannot see now, but we will be able to see then. And it's just a glorious and great thing to think about the experiences that we will have when we reach heaven. When we think about the nature of heaven, the nature of knowing God is an eternal nature. It is a, a place where it, can, it cannot be corrupted. It can't be stained with all the evils and the issues that we deal with here on this earth. That's why we ought to be glad that we are on our way, if we are on our way to heaven, because we will be able to say goodbye to this earth. Yeah, yeah. And we will be enjoying a new earth and a new heaven, as Revelation said. And that new heavenly earth and new, new earth, rather, new heaven is one where it will, it will house God, the Son of God, as well as the Holy Spirit, all the angels, as well as all of God's people will be able to live and dwell yeah. there for uh, I, I just, I just, when I think about it, I, I love it because I got to deal with all the problems we deal with. You know what I mean? The pain, the stuff that I deal with, the effects of this life, death when it comes. We don't have to deal with death no more. We don't have to deal with sicknesses no more. Even this COVID-19 will have no way of existing in the place that God has prepared for his children from before the foundation of the world. So therefore, we ought to have that joy. We ought to have joy uh, in the hope of being able to exist forever with God in a place like that. I'd like to, to, to ask all the entire church to keep, uh, uh, keep, keep, keep the church, your church family, your brothers and sisters in Christ in prayer, particularly those that, that have lost loved ones. Amen. Uh, I'm uh, very mindful of uh, the uh, sister of Sister Nicole Bly, as even as well as the uh, brother of Brother uh, Dwayne Bly, just considering uh, the heaviness that they are experiencing, I'm, I'm asking that the church keep them in prayer as well as all those who have uh, lost loved ones during this time, um, and as well as the, the, the nation, the world, who are also dealing with uh, much grief and the loss of loved ones due to this this epidemic called the COVID-19 or the coronavirus um, that, that, that we all are aware of. I um, also ask that we continue to support and pray for the work that we've uh, striven to continue to do to impact this community around us. Uh, keep your children in prayer, keep your children in the word, you stay in the word uh, for all those things that are absolutely necessary during these types of times. I wanna express my appreciation again for these, these brothers and these southern brothers that have uh, come up here uh, Sunday by Sunday to support uh, you all in, in, in being able to worship virtually. Worship God virtually. Yeah. Uh, I believe that we are to worship God in spirit and truth. I'm going to keep reminding everybody of that so that we can understand that our worship is accepted even though you may be sitting on your couch or wherever you are. You need to understand that your worship needs to be in spirit. That simply, simply means that your heart and your mind ought to be connected with God as you adore and you think about and appreciate all that God has done, particularly through his son, Jesus the Christ. And God accepts your worship even though you were at home during this time. We, we, we've been looking at a few things as far as being encouraged during these times. Very, very unprecedented, unique, and, and uh, novel, novel times for not just us here in Kansas City, but as we know and probably have been seeing on the news, it, it is the same experience for everybody across the world. And it has created many disruptions to our everyday lives. Uh, our work life is not the same. Our, our job life, our social life, rather, is not the same. The, the, our hobbies and so forth are not the same. Everything has been impacted to a degree it has been disrupted by this virus, which has created a, a, lot of, a lot of challenges in the way 
that, that, that we are used to operating in, in our time here on the earth. But there's one space in our lives that, that should not be interrupted or corrupted by the impacts of this virus. And that space ought to be the space at our homes. What I mean is, is that the, the character of family, the design of family that God has ordained should not be disrupted, although there are circumstances, challenging circumstances on the outside. For God intended that the family unit be the one that be able to weather through the challenging time. Watch this together. Amen. And I, I found it interesting that, that, that Peter would bring up family life in this letter, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. But, but I realized that, that if we consider the entire background, again, the, the background of the recipients or the context of the recipients of the letter is that they were going through trying times. They were going through very hard times as a result of their faith in Jesus the Christ. And as I thought about it, I realized that, that the foundation, the foundation for you and my support is family. Amen. I, I, I truly realized and thought about it and considered why is it that Peter would bring up the behavior or the character of family in the middle of this letter that, that is to our people who are dealing with trying times just as you and I are dealing with this trying time of COVID-19. And again, I realize that it's because God intended for the family out of all social uh, entities or all organizations, the family was intended to be a foundation for support for all that exists in that family. Amen. While that definitely should exist for God's overall family, that starts in you and my individual families at our home. Amen. And so I, I thought it would be good, beneficial, necessary to remind us as well as inform others of what God intends as far as you and I being or receiving the grace of God, Amen. how is it that God intends for that to impact our homes, mm. right? How is it God intended for us to have grace-filled homes, grace-full homes, right? In other words, I want to preach and teach this morning about domestic grace. I think it is very vital to, to understand, again, and be informed about God's grace and how he expects for it to play out in the home during these times. If you notice, if you notice in 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse number 1, uh, Peter begins, when he begins his instruction here, he begins with wives. Now, it's interesting that the word for wives is actually just means woman. Uh, I want to say to all those who are listening, although you may not be married at this time, this also has application for those who are seeking or designed to be married. Uh, not only that, but I also believe it has application for those who uh, still may not be married, but can also encourage somebody in regard to their marriage or in regard to their families. Because these things are from the Holy Spirit to encourage families during trying times. Now, it's interesting, so Peter begins with, with the wife, and he, he talks about how a woman or how a wife should be in her home. And again, remember, this is all against the background of them going through trying times. And the instruction that Peter gives the wife, he says, be submissive to your own husbands. That's the role. That's the, that's the function that that the Holy Spirit wants for, for wives to understand their principal function in relation to their husband is one that is submissive. Now, look, look, I understand. I understand this is 2020, and this word submissive has usually has or is seen in a very negative light. It's, it's usually seen in a very negative light, and I understand why it's seen in a very negative light. 
uh, because man or humanity over the years have, have abused scriptures and they have not uh, understood them in the proper context of scripture or gained the understanding of what God intends when he talks about submission. Submission is not a negative thing. As a matter of fact, we've already looked at chapter 2 and how God instructs for everybody that's in his family to be submissive to ruling authorities. Also, if we are workers or if we have a boss, we are all, as children of God, supposed to walk in a submissive manner with our bosses. This is not something that God intended to be a negative thing. As a matter of fact, when we even consider our master, our Lord, Jesus the Christ, who we are all supposed to be followers of, when we consider the nature of the life that Jesus lived while he was on this earth, Jesus lived a submissive life. First of all, the Bible teaches, now watch this, although he knew he was equal with God, he did not consider his equality with God something to be grasped, but he emptied, he emptied himself, rather, and became a servant on our behalf. So in other words, what Jesus did when he came to the earth to benefit all of us is he submitted to the will of his Father. So Jesus lived a submissive life. Not only that, but, but even look at how Jesus submitted to all the different requests of people. Every time somebody came up to Jesus, they had a need for something. You will very rarely find any time where Jesus said, no, I challenge anybody to study the life of Jesus and everything that was requested of him. He very, very, very rarely ever said no. So Jesus lived a submissive life even to those who requested things of him every single day tying him out, right? So what I'm trying to show, what I'm trying to bring to light here is, is bring back God's intention about the nature or the character of submission. If Jesus would submit, then submission is not a bad thing and we need not look at it in a bad light. Now, I'm doing that because I understand again the abuse over the years that people have given uh, to texts such as these that teach the character of a wife with her husband. But watch this now, watch this. Uh, Peter has a purpose, the Holy Spirit has a purpose in all this. He says that the wives are to be submissive to their husbands, their own husbands, by the way. Uh, in other words, what he's really saying is women, you're supposed to be so submissive to your own man. Uh, because husbands really didn't have a term back then, so whoever is your man, that is, it is rather who you're supposed to be submissive to, right? And when we talk about submissive, when we talk about submissive, it is not, uh, it, it's, it's, it's more of a function. It's, it's not so much about hierarchy. Yeah. It's really about a role or a function that is played. Watch this. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. I love the example that uh, my dear brother, uh, Brother McCluney, always gives. He, he, he always gives the, when he talks about husband and wife, he always gives the illustration of a football team. And he talks about how the quarterback is, is, is the one. You know, the quarterback is just that one. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, but the quarterback, although the quarterback is out there doing all the plays and so forth, the quarterback is not, or rather the quarterback is submissive, though, to the coach, right? right? So it's not about a rank or hierarchy so much. It's more so about the function between husband and wife, all right? But watch the purpose. The purpose that Peter gives, he says, is so that even if your husband is hard-headed, in other words, it's what Peter is saying. If, if, if your husband, if the man refuses to submit or be obedient to the word of God, that means that they have not obeyed the gospel or they have obeyed the gospel and there's some aspect of the word that they are not yielding to, right? Peter says that they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wife. Watch it as they observe your chaste and respectful behavior. I think this is powerful because this shows the, 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 the intent that God had with the function of the woman. Uh, uh, Peter says, 
Listen, Peter is not saying, and see, the thing about this COVID 19 thing, too, is that everybody is wrapped up into their homes right now. And wives can see all the faults and flaws of their husband every single day. Y'all know I ain't mine. Every single you said no regret. Well, I'm just saying that it's probably very common now that everybody is having to spend more time at home and around one another. Nobody's going to work as often as they used to, used to and so forth and so forth. It, it, it's probably a little easier, and you, know, you see the or your face rather with the faults and the flaws of your husband a lot often. And, and, and I know, I know, it, it is very natural to communicate and say some things. You are disobeying the word of God. You ain't following the word of God. But 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 it's interesting that what Peter is showing here, he's not saying that a woman should not communicate to her husband. He's not saying that communication or uh, her communication to him should be prohibited. What he's saying is what's effective is when the woman changes her method. See, y'all, I know, see, I'm going get all the husbands in trouble today, so that's all right, though. I'm a husband. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm usually cautious when it comes to this because this is a very sacred uh, institution that God has put in place, and we want to make sure that all, uh, the proper guidance is always given. What Peter is saying is that when your husband ain't listening, it's better, it's more effective to change the method of your communication. Well, what method is that? Well, you know, it's interesting that uh, 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 reports show and, 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 and a number of uh, articles show that 65% of people or the population learn by visual learning. 30% uh, learn by auditory. Auditory means that you can listen and just soak in everything that somebody is saying and you remember, you know how it is, you know the people that can remember everything you said last Saturday to the very T of everything that you said, that's auditory learners. Yeah. But I know women out there right now will probably agree with me that that's not most of the husbands is that we are auditory learners. <laughs> it, 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 it's shown, and I think it's uh, the fact that men fall more into this visual learning thing. Now, I'm not giving no excuses for the man for not listening. Don't give up the evidence wrong. What I'm showing here is what Peter is, show, is saying by the Holy Spirit is what is effective is when the behavior of the woman is flawless and is pure because what will happen is that it has the power to transform the very convictions of the man. Now that's powerful. That's powerful. That means that a woman's behavior, what God intended in the home is that when a husband ain't living, when a man ain't listening, that the woman can move and by her and how she's been impacted by God's grace. In other words, if wives, if women want their men to move in a certain direction according to the word, what's effective is when women live out the life that God's grace has bestowed on them, and that will show to the men exactly how God's grace has impacted them. And y'all know how it is. When we observe their wives, it moves us a bit. Y'all come on now. I'm in here with all men now. Y'all come on now. Uh, 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 y'all can't even get some support around this place. But now, but now, the point is, Peter is saying is that women in their behavior, in that submissive behavior, you know, watch this. It, it means that, that her ability, and, and let me tell you something else about submission, it's voluntary. That means that women, you, you, don't, you don't have to submit. This is something that's voluntary based on your relationship with the Almighty God. And, and I, I know I hear somebody say, well, he don't deserve it. Well, he may not. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm just saying, I mean, he may, he may not. He may not, he, he may not deserve anything as far as uh, you yielding to him or whatever. But watch this. Watch. That's where grace comes in, in the family. Why? Because grace is when somebody bestows kindness or favor on somebody. Watch this. And they never deserve it. Yeah. Never. Never. That's part of a woman's role in showing grace to her husband. Now he don't deserve it. He made a whole bunch of mistakes this week. He didn't got on my last nerve. Watch this. But a holy woman of God will still yield to her husband based on her love for God and her love for her husband even when 
He don't deserve it and has made numerous mistakes throughout the week. And what are you doing? You are showing your husband grace. Amen. That's what God intended yeah. for the family. You see this? Yeah. Now watch this. Watch this. Then Peter, verse number three, he says, your adornment must not be merely external, braiding the hair, wearing gold jewelry, or putting on dresses. Let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of God. Yeah. Peter, Peter recognized, especially during that culture, that it was very common for uh, women to put much emphasis on their outward appearance. And there's not much of a difference in today's culture. Amen. Right. And I, I hate the fact, I really hate the fact that, that the world has placed so many pressures on women when it comes to how they look and how they act. Yes. And, and, uh, and those women who have submitted to how, how humans think and what humans think, what people, men and other women think about how it is that you're supposed to look and, 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 and how you're supposed to be and all that, it can create a lot of pressure on your life. Yes, sir. And, and uh, uh, But I, I want you to know on this morning that, that if you are a daughter of God, if you are a child of God, uh, the one that you should be most concerned about uh, 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 as far as how they think about who you are and how you are, that is God. It's not the people of the world. They just as ignorant, ignorant as ignorant can be. You know what I mean? Just, just, they don't know nothing. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, let, me, let me not get down. Let, let me explain the text real quick. So Peter understood this. And so, and so, and I believe, I truly do believe that the word merely inserted in the text is, is appropriate because I don't believe that Peter is, is saying or suggesting that, that women are not focused or this is an all white divine ban on outward beauty or outward adornment. Uh, 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 because, because adornment, watch this, watch this. In fact, the word adornment comes from uh, uh, the word cosmos. That's where we get our word cosmetics. And I, and I know there's a bunch of struggle right now because cosmetics are having been able to use the nail salons and all that stuff to shut down, the hair salons and all that. I, I get that, I get that. And, you know, I don't believe Peter's saying you can't do none of that stuff. What Peter is saying is that he's trying to help shift the focus of the beauty. Uh, because watch this again, I don't think there's anything wrong with outward cosmetics within itself. It comes from the word cosmos. And the last time I checked, cosmos is the adornment that God uh, equipped the entire world with. And when we think about cosmos, it is the appearance of the earth. And when God in creation, all throughout Genesis 1, when he set the expanse between the waters, when God pulled the water from the dry land, when God caused the trees to sprout, when God created man and woman, he looked on it and said it looked real good. Amen. Y'all missing this, man. Y'all uh, uh, so there's nothing wrong with cosmetics within itself because God is the author of cosmetics. Amen. God showed sure enough know how to make some stuff look good. Freeze. But what Peter is saying is that women's focus of their adornment or their cosmetics yeah. should shift to being the internal cosmetics. Right. Watch this, watch this. Because one of the reasons is that external or outward cosmetics will truly fade away one of these days. But internal cosmetics transcend. They go beyond how old you get or how your body gets. Those internal cosmetics are those, watch this, that are, not, that are, are, are most important or chiefly important. They look good to God. Watch what Peter says. Peter says, this is, he says, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable. That means it can't be destroyed. See, see, it's one thing, it's one thing, I, I, I don't want to get too far down this line, but see, it's one thing to look all good, but if somebody's attitude ain't right, yeah. Yeah. That, that can make things challenging, you know what I mean? That goes for anybody, really, but particularly in this context, a woman can be, as the world would consider, completely decked out, fashionable in everything, but if her attitude ain't right, if her attitude ain't right, 
Amen. The richest, most powerful, noble men don't want to be with her. Yeah, yeah. I ain't worried about getting in trouble with women. I don't, I don't worry about it. I'm just preaching God's word. Uh, so I'm just telling it like it is. You know what I mean? That's what Peter's pointing. He says, but the unfading, the imperishable cosmetics of the inner person is the very thing that God is, uh, rather that God looks at and considers good. Now watch this. Watch this. I'm going to bring it back to the context. Why would Peter be saying this? Because we all know that women can use what they got to get what they want. Y'all yeah, miss that. Don't yeah. miss it, man. Come on now. It's a methodology that's been used over centuries. In other words, women in those cultures and even in these cultures would use the outward beauty to influence. Yeah. But what Peter is saying is when it comes to your husband, that ought not be your focus to move him in regard to matters of God. No. If women are going to move or transform or help transform their men in matters of God, they cannot use things that God does not like. What they have to use are those things that God likes. And the Bible says that God loves and, and places a high value on a woman with a gentle and quiet spirit. Amen. Now, what does that mean, brother? Does that mean I need to shut up? No, that, that's not what that means. Because gentle means that uh, you're mild or you're kind. Quiet in the text. Acts, 11, Acts chapter 11, verse number 2 and verse number 18 is a very good example to help everybody understand that this does not mean that a woman can't say nothing. No. Uh, Acts chapter 11, verse number 2, what happens? Peter had been to a Gentile's house, preaching to the first Gentiles, and they had been converted. When he got back to the Jews, Acts chapter 11, verse number 2, it said that they got hostile with them. They were upset because they knew it was not their custom for Jews to be in the same house as a Gentile. And it says that they created, they, they took issue with Peter. After Peter explained to them everything that happened, Acts chapter 11 and verse number 18 uh, says that when they heard it, they quieted down. But watch it. It says, and they glorified God. So it was not that they became the completely mute. It was that they became non-hostile. And then they glorified God. So what does this mean? This means that the, 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 the nature of a woman in relation to her man and her husband, rather, should not be one that is hostile, one that's contentious, one that will stir up ruckus in a moment. That's, that's not, that don't look good to God. What looks good to God is when a woman can be quiet, she can be cool, calm, and collective when things are going on in her home, and by that behavior, she can move her husband. That's what Peter is saying. Now watch it. Then Peter gives the example. And I'm going to show about the example and justify all the things that I just said. Uh, Peter uses in his example, uh, he illustrates the life of Sarah. And, and he talks about how women are her daughters when they behave in these ways. And he describes them as holy women. That's another thing that shows that this text is not just one that fits into their context or their culture. He went back thousands of years and pulled Sarah in the mix. So Sarah's behavior and how Sarah acted in her home and in her family is something that transcends the time. So that's why Peter can also apply her holy characteristic even to those sisters in that day. Are y'all seeing this? Now watch this. He illustrates Sarah and he talks about how she adorned herself, the cosmetics that Sarah put on. Now, it's interesting. When you go back and look at Genesis, uh, apparently the, 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 the Sarah was a good little woman. Yeah. Even in her old age, she was that, and that, now you know it's off the chain. If you're 65 years old and the king of Egypt wants to take you as a wife because he recognizes how good you look. Yeah. But not only that, but the husband, Abraham had already recognized earlier in the context how good her wife and his wife looked in the first place. And that's why he said, listen, to every place we go, don't say you, don't say you my wife. You better say you my sister. So what I'm trying to show in that is not that Sarah didn't have no outward good looks. That, 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 that wasn't the case. No, she looked good, right? That's, that's what the Bible says, right? But when Peter recalls her adornment, he doesn't point back to what happened when, when, or what they did as regard, rather, referring rather to when they went to uh, the, the Pharaoh in Egypt or whatnot, 
He would have caused what she did when she was in her 80s. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Yeah, boy, I tell you, man. What she did in her 80s when God visited them in Genesis chapter 18 it is she referred to Abraham as her Lord. And that's the beauty that Peter recalls. So he's showing that even when Sarah was in her upper age, she regarded her husband in a way that God would consider beautiful or was considered good looking. What is Peter saying? Peter is saying that this is the grace or this is the behavior that a woman shows her husband even in circumstances which are crazy on the outside. Not here. And I'm going to touch this a little bit more in just a second. I do want to make sure that you understand that this is not saying that women cannot say anything. This is not saying that women are inferior. That's not what the text is saying. And I'll prove that in just a minute. Amen. But now Peter, Peter switches now. And, and I want you to understand and tell you something too. What he also says about Sarah is that Sarah lived a life where she hoped in God and she did not have no fear of intimidation or nothing. Now notice now, she, she I don't want to tell something this morning, I don't want to jump the bell, but she didn't fear that. She, well, she wasn't scared of that. Now we know she wasn't the high well, Can you imagine, can you imagine going to a place and your husband telling you, now I want you to go up in here and tell them that you ain't my wife, knowing that there's a risk that they're going to take you into their home? But Sarah did it anyway. Y'all said, oh boy, that, that'd be different from women. Sarah was a soldier, man. Let me not do that, but uh, yeah, she had to be so just be like, all right, man, I'm gonna do it. The point is, is that she lived a life that 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 was not a fear because of her trust in God. Amen. Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Then he turned his attention to her. This is interesting because the content for husbands is shorter than the, than that for wives. I'm telling you, it's of a great magnitude that Peter speaks to men. Peter wants men to also understand how they're supposed to function in their homes, even during times, stressful times. Peter says, you husbands, in the same way, live with. Now, I, I, can, I can be a little bit more... Ah, expositional with just this one verse because it's so short of content. But I, I think that the, the, the amount of content that's packed in this one verse is, is so crucial. He says, live with. Ah, that, that, that means to dwell together. See, Peter understood that, that it was common in their culture that a, a man could, could put away a woman uh, for almost any reason he thought he could justify. And, and, and Peter knew that this was the common mind, and so he wants to make sure that men understand what is God's expectation of men in your family, in your home, even during times like these. Listen, live with. That means that men are to experience this life together with their wife. That's the entire purpose that God created women for men in the first place, is so that men could have somebody with them. Why y'all seeing that? To have a companion in his life. So that means then that even during these stressful times of COVID-19, stresses are coming all over the place. It gets frustrated sometimes. The man's role, the man's job, as he is in his home, is to endure these things. Watch it with his wife. It's not the time for men to isolate themselves from their wives, from their family, or anything of the sort. This is the time that God expects for men to be with them. Are y'all seeing that? He expects for things to be done and experienced together. And it's interesting that these are times. Watch this now. Man. Let me take this a step further, Lord, in mercy of Jesus. When he also says live with. The connotation or the understanding of that phrase also means a marital relations. Now, for those who may not have understood what I just said, that, that simply means the intimacy that is due to a husband and wife uh, because they're married. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't nobody, okay, all right. Well, the, the point is, the point is 
now, that means that even though circumstances on the outside of the home can be as challenging as they want to be, that should not stop or hinder the intimacy that's due to the spouse. Or, uh, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. That also is wrapped into Amen. this live with term. Yes, and so what Peter is saying is that when it comes in the see, 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 y'all give me another saying. See, Peter wasn't saying that women need to completely put their lingerie away earlier. That y'all, y'all, that all that mercy. He ain't saying that, that all that good stuff need to go away. No, 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 no. See, because between the husband and the wife, based on the things that they like, they can do all that they want in the home. Now, I'm not going to take that too much further, but the point is, is that Peter is saying that the dwelling together of husband and wife should still be a focus even if things are challenging and job is creating headaches and grocery stores are shutting down. Money's looking funny. It don't matter because I still got my honey. Yeah, that's what he's saying, right? Yeah, boy, I tell you, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Ah, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Watch this now. Watch this. He says, live with. I love it, man. And I'm going to tell you something, man. Me and my wife, we, we have had. Jessica said to me, when this thing first started, when COVID-19 first started, she said, we are going to make sure that we check in with one another. And she said, emotionally, physically, spiritually, all that stuff. Why? Because in these trying times, is not the time for us to grow apart. These are actually opportunities for family to grow together. Yeah, we got more time at home, you know what I mean? I understand some of us working from home and all that other kind of stuff. But man, I tell you, this is a whole lot of time at home. And I believe God is just blessing folk with the opportunity to learn your spouse even more. Husbands learn your wives even more. This is a grand opportunity for that to happen. Watch what, watch what people say. Watch what husband he ain't done. He says, live with your wives. Watch this. In an understanding way, yeah. or with knowledge. Right. What do you mean, Peter? Uh, Peter, of course, doesn't expect for men to know absolutely everything there is about women, because I, 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 I don't think that's going to happen. However, I do believe that it is crucial that we understand that Peter uh, wants for men to dwell or understand their wives with all the strength that God has blessed them with. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. In order to understand something, you gotta have knowledge of it. Right? All right? Uh, in order to have knowledge about a woman, that also means you gotta listen to her. See, this is how I know that this is why I know that Peter would didn't mean quiet or absolutely mute in the previous verse. Because he says in an understanding way, well, how is it that you and I as husbands are going to understand our wives if we don't want to listen to them. Right. right? That means then, if we're going to live or dwell with them in an understanding way, it also requires good communication. Uh -huh. huh? And watch this. Good communication. Watch these scenes now. Good communication also requires care. Yes. Because if you don't care, what, what's the reason to communicate to find out anything you need to know? No, what Peter expects, what God expects, is that the husband would function as one who would constantly be understanding the very needs of his wife. Why? So that he can show up and show out when he needs to. Now, 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 now watch this now. Y'all listen to me. It does not mean that everything you hear or how you hear them all the time are going to be so grand or pleasant to your ears. But watch it. That's where grace comes in again. Because as husbands, we still owe it to our wife to hear them out because we need to understand where they are, or rather, in order to serve them to where they are. Amen. And I challenge me, and I, you know, I can be a little bit on me because I am a man, you know what I mean? But I challenge me, and I challenge me that, that during these times uh, to, to, to ask yourself, what is it that I understand more about my wife throughout these times? What, what, what is it that I've learned more about my wife through these times? What have I gained? What have I learned uh, that will benefit me and how 
how I treat my wife during these times and how we grow closer together and not apart. And watch this, watch this. If you know, if you know husbands, if you know men that have been contemplating the, the thought of leaving and doing all that, and the traffic are down, wanting to leave. Every time something gets uh, eaten and this, that, that, no, 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 that show nothing. Ain't the, uh, the, the duty of a Christian man is to leave at the drop of every dime and every uh, hard circumstance. No, no, no. The husband's role is to make sure that you keep that thing together, right? And make sure that you are standing in the gap to make sure that your wife is taken care of and everything that she needs. Now, and that's, again, does it mean that you'll be perfect at that? Absolutely not. But it ought to be something that men are taking the opportunity to grow in during these times. Amen. Now watch this. Peter then says, if you need to understand, understand it even more. Uh, Peter says, let me give you an example. I, 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 I dare any man right now, right now, right, right where you are, in your home, wherever you're at. I, I go grab a, a glass from your cabinet, a glass cup, glass bowl, whatever you want, just as long as it's glass, wine glass, I don't know, whatever it is. And I dare you to stand in your driveway and toss that bad boy up as high as you can and then think that you're going to catch it when it comes back in. I'm talking about glasses to you now. It's something that you that's useful in your house. That's useful in your house. And I dare you to go take a glass and throw that bad boy as hard as you can, straight up in the air, and then try to gauge where it's going to come out. When Peter says understanding, that's the comparison that he did. He says that men, we need to live with them in an understanding, understanding by the way. As with a weaker vessel. Peter brings up the term vessel, which is a word that was used for a vase or something that could easily break. Notice he says weaker, which is comparison, which also shows that men and women are weak. Right. But in the family, in the home, what God constructed was that the nature of a woman was that she is weaker. And therefore, the way in which we live with them ought to be keeping in mind that just as we would take a glass and throw it up in the sky thinking that we can gauge it and catch it, we also shouldn't treat our wives that we eat. See, see, it's different if you take a tennis ball and do the same thing. Why? Because a tennis ball has buoyancy and can bounce back and do all that other kind of stuff. But glass, if we handle that thing in a way fragile, absolutely. I'll give you another example. Watch this. Imagine if you had a big screen TV, flat screen TV, 85, 92 inch, I don't know. Ah. And uh, say you were carrying that bad boy. I'm talking about brand new off the shelf. Out of the box, out of the styrofoam and everything. And say you were carrying that bad boy trying to carry it up the steps or put it on something. It requires strength, absolutely, absolutely. But I'll bet you one thing, that strength better be under control. Why? Because if you make one wrong move, you will drop the TV and you will shatter everything that you just paid for. Huh? That's what Peter is saying. The, the man has a responsibility to treat his wife with care, knowing that God has constructed her as a weaker vessel. Now, this weaker vessel does not mean that she is weaker uh, emotionally necessarily or even spiritually. Because there are some women who are strong emotionally and physically, or emotionally and spiritually, nonetheless. What Peter is more so describing is the nature in which God constructed women, the physical nature in which God constructed women. Now, all those things can play into one another, absolutely. But I do not want anybody to think that Peter is saying that women or just weaker in everything. That's not what Peter is saying. Amen. What Peter is talking about is the way in which God constructed women, and as a result, and because of that, that's the mindset that men ought to have as we live with. Y'all see that? Amen. Now watch this. Then Peter says, there's one more thing men need to do. He says that, show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life. 
Man, this is good, boy. You, you know, all right, man, I got another one for y'all. Because I, I, I can do this in illustration or example. Think about the, the most expensive possession that you got in your house. Or within your house, near your house. Your land, whatever it is. I'm talking about the most expensive possession. And not only the most expensive, but the possession that you favor the most. The one, the one that you know that you've shown up like the possession, I don't know if it's your grill, if it's your, your TV, your Xbox, your car, I don't know what it is, maybe your lawn, your garden, whatever it is that you, you know it's, it took a lot of money. But watch this. You also spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, you brag about it, you protect it. Y'all, come on now. You, you do all those things in regard to whatever that is, right? Peter is saying, that's how we should treat our wives. Render them honor. And that means that we give them such high regard, such high respect. We, man, we, put, we, we say, ain't nothing more expensive uh, than you in this life. You know what I mean? Can't nobody put a price on my wife is what Peter is essentially saying. Yeah. Now, I, again, I preach the text. It, even if it convicts me, because I know that these are things that I even need to grow in. But it's something that we all need to understand. Peter said we ought to place a priceless value on our wives. And what's the reason why? He says because they are co-heirs of grace. They are our closest partners, our closest companions, who are looking forward to the same grace of life that God has bestowed on all of his children. Who am I reaching after that life with? And who should I be striving after that life with? It ought to be the one that God has blessed to be at my side from my rear, and that is my wife. Amen. And Peter's saying that's why we ought to place such high value on our wife and show them that amount of respect. Right? And then watch what Peter said. Watch the purpose. Watch the purpose. He says, so that your prayers are not hindered. Now, you know, I've lost communication with a number of people in this life. Uh, very few who I've slightly been bothered by losing that communication. Uh, you know what I mean? Just, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, but it would be very detrimental to lose communication with God. Amen. Because that means that all my prayers for yeah. strength, and wisdom, and his providence, his favor, even asking him for understanding and guiding me through his word Amen. to find those scriptures that pertain to my life and my circumstance, and all that was just cut off. Man, I would feel lost. I, I would feel devastated, you know what I mean? And Peter is saying that's exactly what God will do if we don't show up or treat our wives in the way that they're supposed to be treated. Amen. Are we seeing this? But why is this so significant? This is significant because it also impacts our children. Even impacts those who are around us. Everybody can see the family and the family unit and what they ought to see is that there's grace shown in the family. Are y'all seeing this? Husbands jack up every day twice on Sunday. Don't, may not even, why, again, you don't feel like they deserve none of it, none of it, none of it, none of it, they got on your lap. No, 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 If you love God, if you love your husband, you show him grace. Why? Because God showed you that same grace. If, if not even more. Husbands, I know you, you think that your wife, get, this time you've been trying to fill up in your house and, and that this, and you've been asked to do this and asked to do that, and this at the end, you don't know which way to turn, and your wife is in, no, 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 Take a step back and realize that what we ought to be doing is treating our wives with grace. Well, she don't deserve it the way she talked to me last week. She don't deserve it from the word that she said. She don't deserve it. She don't deserve it. She's been spanked. Ever since last, I, 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 I get that. I get that. But when grace comes in, Amen. grace says that even when she is acting in ways where she don't deserve it, that because I'm her husband, Amen. and because of my relationship,
relationship with God, I'm still going to show her with honor. Yeah. I'm still going to treat her like a prize, a, a, a high-value prize, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm still going to treat her in ways that will demonstrate that I care that she is a weaker vessel. I know, but he spent money on this last week. He spent money on that last week, and he did this, and I'm tired. I, I, okay, I get it. Abraham didn't make all the business decisions either. Uh-uh. Hey, no, no, Abraham, as a matter of fact, him telling Sarah to go in there acting like his sister was a bad decision, even after God had already promised him that he was going to protect him from any enemies, here it is that Abraham devised something anyway, and watch it, Sarah still followed him. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, why not? I'm going to show you something else. Watch this. Watch the care of a husband. Even when Sarah had, had spoken to Abraham, when his sex or her, his uh, son, which was her sex son, was mocking Isaac, she said, you got to take that boy and my mama and get up out of here. Abraham was struggling with that. Like, nah, man, nah, this is ridiculous. Nah, man, that's my son, that's my son. God came to Abraham and said, listen to your wife. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I'm listening, man. Do y'all see the mutual nature that God has created in the family structure? It's not the men just, just get away with everything they want to and just instruct the woman with everything. No, 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 no. If, if they care about their wives, they're going to make sure that their command and their rule is one that comes from God and the concern of their wives. At the same time, their wives, the wives are going to ensure or say something or communicate to their husband in a gentle spirit, keeping God in mind and her love for her husband in mind at the same time. Now, 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 now. Both receive a reward. Both are going to receive the grace of life. Going back to the example of a coach and a quarterback. The coach is the one that gives commands, plays. The quarterback is the one that goes out and does his thing. And if you ever noticed, I remember when my home got hurt and when he came back, you know what Coach Eddie Reed did? He beat up the protection. Yes, y'all, don't miss that analogy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Don't miss that analogy, y'all. Uh, uh, yeah, when, when, when he beat up the protection, you make sure that he is protected. Yeah. Watch it. When they won the Super Bowl, it wasn't just Andy Reid that got, yeah, 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 no, man, huh? It wasn't just my home that got recognized. It wasn't just that. No, they together Amen. got recognized. Yeah. And that's what God has orchestrated that as we operate as families, our domestic grace is going to bring us to a place where we will receive that eternal life together forever. Amen. Now, part of the reason. Why I have brought all of this up is because since the stay at home war, it has been announced via news, via newspaper, so forth, that domestic violence has increased significantly across the world. It has significantly increased in, in the home, in the family unit, which God designed, the way that he designed, to impact the world. It has increased 35% recordedly. And according to NBC, it, is, it has increased by 35% in the United States of America. Domestic abuse, domestic violence has increased by 26% in the Kansas City area. When I heard that, 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 that immediately told me that the understanding and the appreciation of what a family is supposed to be is very necessary to be learned and taught in our society during this time. And it, it has been reported that, that, that because families, particularly women and children, because they feel like they are trapped at home and they do not have an escape 
And not only that, but there are stressors that are impacting the entire family. And the husbands, in the majority of the cases, are allowing those stressors to drive them to bring harm on their families. Because of economic stress, not being able to go to work, and all the normal irritations that they normally deal with in everyday life. And what I've learned and understand once again is that the world needs an understanding of how family is supposed to operate in domestic grace and not domestic abuse. Amen. And it's interesting, it's interesting because uh, oftentimes, oftentimes we don't hear much, even I have not, have not preached much about this particular topic in the family unit. But I want to make sure that everybody understands that God does not endorse violence in the family. He does not endorse domestic violence. He does not endorse domestic abuse. Whatever type of abuse it is, whether it be verbal or whether it be physical, God does not endorse it. As a matter of fact, the Bible in Psalm chapter 10 and verse number 5, I believe it is, the Bible says that God cannot stand those who love violence. So God is not, he does not accept, he does not accept when men fly off the handle and throw something or swing something or curse out every day and twice on Sunday and do those things to them, God does not accept that. And while there are very few, while there are very few, he also does not accept it from women either. Because I tell you, there are some cases where women actually create more violence than the man does. I need for everybody to understand. I don't care what the world says, what the world is doing, how Satan has framed the mind of humanity out in the world. We as children of God, we belong to God, and therefore our behavior ought to be governed by grace and not by the world that would bring us to a point where we would harm our families. No, 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 no. That's, that's not the character of God. And as a matter of fact, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 11 that God is a defender and he will vindicate those who are oppressed and those who have been mistreated. And so I'm here to tell you that if you are and if you know anybody that is being abused in their homes in any form or fashion, don't, 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 don't succumb to the misinterpretations of scripture thinking that a woman or a family or children have to stay under that mess. No. Contact the authorities. That's why they're there. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you right now, God don't endorse that mess. No. If you know somebody or if you are in some circumstance like that, I am encouraging you by the word of God to seek help and contact the authorities so that you can receive help during this time. Amen. Because that is not the way that God would have us to show up and represent family in the times or in trying time. So I encourage, I encourage us to consider these things, consider these things that Peter has said about the family, about the domestic grace that we ought to have between husband and wife, because husband and wife are the one that they're the one that impact everybody else. Is when a husband and wife know how to coexist and grace and know how to treat each other with utmost love in their relationships and in their homes. And so I encourage you, I encourage you that if you have not taken these times, if you have, take, have not taken these time to consider where your grace impact is with your family, I consider you to do that. I consider you to take that time during these times and appreciate the trying circumstances that God has given us as opportunities to grow closer with our families, experience them, learn their desires, do more with them, laugh with them, cry with them, whatever is necessary. Amen. That's what we ought to be drawn to more than being led by all the passions of the world to be so concerned about the things that the world concerns themselves with. I encourage you with this message. I submit it to you with our love from our heart, hoping and praying that you understood as well that you were impacted in your heart by God's word and how he moved Peter to speak by the Holy Spirit. If you need to respond to this message, any way that you need to respond, I encourage you to do so. Submit your request.
via Facebook or any other format that we have. And we truly will be praying for you for whatever your needs are during this time. I love and give to God. We give to God. Bless you in all things. Amen. Amen. Joe
reach out to everyone and, and contact them and make sure that they're doing okay. You got something going on? So, uh, you know, I just mentioned mother uh, uh, prayer for her the challenge is on the job. Oh, yes, uh, Sister Ron Smith. Uh, you know, she's a medical professional. We want to make sure that we pray for her the challenges that she's enduring at the job right now. We know that it's, it's hectic for them and all of those, all those first line responders, health care and uh, medical care and law enforcement and whatnot. We want to make sure those who will continue to work during this, this trying time. Amen. 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 I went to the grocery store yesterday. The shelves are full. Amen. I appreciate it. <laughs> Amen. So let's continue to pray for everyone. And again, like I said, let's just make sure that we're reaching out um, and, and, and holding up and one another in love and prayer. At this time, let us pray. Uh, kind righteous Father, it's once again that your children have gathered themselves in your throne room of grace and mercy. Father, just thanking you for all of the many blessings that you bestowed upon us, Father. We know that we are because you are, and you allowed us to be. Father, we know that this day would not have been possible without you, and we just want to say thank you. We know that yesterday would not have been possible without you, and we want to say thank you. We know that if you give us the ability to see tomorrow, it is all because of you. So again, Amen. Father, even for the, the, the down times in our lives, we want to say thank you. Father, we thank you for your son, the sacrifice that was made on that cross of Calvary, so that we may have a chance at eternal life. Father, and we just pray that we will continue to strive to live our lives in a manner that will show us worthy of your kingdom, Father. Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer that allows us to contact you and speak with you and commune with you and at any time and any place, Father. And on this morning, we, we ask for prayer on behalf of the Saints of Swole Parkway and also worldwide, Father. Those who may be suffering from loss, we ask that you be with the Rye and Dickey families, Father, that you continue to hold them tight and hold them close, Father. That you be with those who are recovering from medical issues, whether it be emotional or spiritual or physical, Father. That you just continue to bless them and bless them in a very special way, Father. Be with us all as we continue to endure these very trying and difficult circumstances, Father. Let us know that we have comfort and relief in knowing that you are an all-present and all-knowing God, Father. And that you'll continue to bless us in the manner that you see fit, Father. We need only to rely on our faith and to rely on you, Father. Father, help us to continue to grow not only in, in, in strength and stature, but also in your word, Father, so that we may be those children, your children, that you would have us to be, Father. Let us not think of only of ourselves, Father, but let us put us in a mindset where we're constantly thinking about others, their needs, and the things that, that they need to have in their lives so that we all can make it through this again, Father. Continue to be with our minister, Brother Evans, in his ministry, Father. Continue to bless him and his family, Father. Bless all of us who continue to labor here, Father. Continue to bless the ministries that are still very much active here at Swan Parkway, Father. Continue to bless our food distribution efforts, Father, that yeah. they continue to reach those who are who are dealing with challenges, Father, but continue to provide us with the strength and resources so that we may be an asset to their lives as well, Father. And Father, just continue to bless us not only in this day, but in days to come, Father. And pray that we'll continue to grow stronger in love of your word and of ourselves and of our family. These things we ask in the name of your son, Christ Jesus. This is your servant's prayer. Let every heart say, amen. 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 All right, just a couple of announcements, and we will we will um, adjourn for today. Uh, on yesterday, Saturday, May the 2nd, um, uh, we continue with our meal distribution program. Uh, yesterday, we gave out uh, 231 meals, amen, amen, which is the largest total to date. So. We are just thankful that word is getting out. We're thankful that we still have the strength and energy and resources to continue. But there's a lot more work to do. Amen. So uh, we want to make sure that we continue to support this effort. Um, the workers who have been working with this ministry have been doing an outstanding job. Amen. Constantly and consistently with a smile on their faces. Amen. Uh, from the food preparers to the food distributors, Father. I mean, it's, it's just a great it's just been great. So we want to continue to, to be thankful uh, and support them and encourage them. Amen. Amen. Um, but we also are in need of some items. So we are, we need some dessert items, uh, namely cookies, cakes, etc. Those things um, that, uh, that will uh, satisfy the, the sweet tooth. Amen. Amen. We want to make sure that we uh, continue to support that effort. So if you have any donations, please, um, on 
the distribution occurs on, um, well, you can bring the items up to the, up to the building Tuesdays from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. We're also on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. So we just want to make sure that we continue to support uh, that. Also, um, you finished would like to announce that um, all graduating seniors, high school and college, we need uh, to get your contact information, amen. So if we can, uh, like life goes on, we're gonna continue, amen. So we, we, got, we got goodies and praise to heap on you, yeah. amen. And I know that we have, uh, Royce Fisher is a senior, so we, we definitely got, you know, I think we, Kelsey Turner is a, is yeah. a senior, amen, yeah. amen. Yeah. I mean, we know we got more than two, <laughs> amen. So uh, if you have a, a graduating high school or college senior, please, Either contact us via social media or send an email to Smoke Parkway Church of Christ, all one word, Smoke Parkway Church of Christ at gmail.com. Amen. Smoke Parkway Church of Christ, all one word, Smoke Parkway Church of Christ at gmail.com. Amen. Also, as I alluded to earlier, um, next week is Mother's Day. Amen. And Brother Evan set us up nicely. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, for Mother's Day, uh, you know, we usually distribute uh, uh, flowers and other goodies on Mother's Day. We won't be able to do that this year, but we're asking that you submit any photographs of your mother, with your mother, uh, submit it to our Facebook page, or also you can send it to the same email address, or Parkway Church of Christ at gmail.com. And we are going to put together a video tribute that we'll post to our social media page and also to our YouTube page for Mother's Day next week. Amen. Amen. So, Submit your photo. You know Brother Benjamin already got most of the pictures anyway. Amen. So but if you have any additional that you want to be a part of the uh, photo tribute, uh, uh, video tribute, rather, make sure you submit those, those uh, photographs for next week. Um, and also, last but not least, you'll get more information on this. As we receive more information regarding our ability to congregate and to worship one with another, we'll continue to update the congregation as to our plans for moving forward. Um, I expect to have some communication from uh, the, the, the church uh, leadership within the next week or so uh, regarding our ability to come together and worship and what our plans, our ideas, and thoughts uh, that we have for that moving forward. We just want to make sure that we are transparent in our communications and that we keep everybody abreast of what is going on um, here at the Swole Parkway Church of Christ. Amen. So if there's nothing else, I think I'll talk about it. Don't get me dry. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Then all we have, we'll have our closing song and our closing prayer. All right, amen, amen. Let us close out. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus singing, no. Amen. Amen.